Chile. We're here at Memorial Park. It's uh, commonly referred to as uh, Battleship Park. We're gonna go in and uh, they really have some very nice displays here. You can see there's a B-52 over there. There's a Black Hawk plane over there. In the background is the uh, is the drum. That's what we're gonna go on. Uh, if you've never been here, uh, it's uh, quite the sight, a lot of things to look at and a lot of things to visit. So we're going to go inside and get a ticket and then uh, take a tour on the, uh, on the drum. We're inside the uh, building before we go out into the, uh, out into the uh, boat itself. If you haven't been to this, uh, this park, they really have done a nice job of bringing in all of the branches of the service in terms of uh, planes and equipment. A lot of it is, uh, is uh, Navy and Marines, but there are Air Force and uh, tanks and whatnot. So and if you haven't been here before, it's really quite interesting. So we're, uh, we're still uh, gathering and Okay, so let's start here. We'll start here. Uh, during World War II, this is a World War II boat, and at the time of the, the attack on Pearl Harbor, we had roughly 52 submarines. The Japanese did not, for some reason, did not attack the submarines. They attacked the bigger ships. So after, uh, after Pearl Harbor, the submarines was our first line of defense. And uh, we're, we're kind of proud of this in the fact that during the war, submarines sag more tonnage than any other ship combined. Uh, so we started with 52 submarines, and at the end of the war, 57 had been sunk. We, we, uh, we acquired the uh, greatest mortality, because when you sink a submarine, you sink like 80 people all at once. So from a, from a numbers point of view, from the four that started with, it was probably the highest uh, mortality rate. So a submarine like this, is roughly 300 feet long, a little over 300 feet long. There's a, there's nine different compartments in there. Each compartment is water is waterproof and and test proof by itself from a damage control point of view. For instance, so if you have a, a a hole in one of the compartments, as you'll see, these big massive doors are closed on each end of the of the compartment. That compartment can be flooded, and and hopefully the rest of the ship will fight. Now I'm going to explain why when we get on board why it's important that a person needs to know everything about every part of this ship and uh, they don't give these dolphins away it takes roughly six months to earn the dolphin you have to know every every piece inside and out of this boat so uh, roughly 80 people uh, after World War II uh, notice there's no what we call a snorkel there's no snorkel on this boat so uh, uh, th this type of a submarine is totally electric. Two shafts on the back, and there's batteries in here, and I'll explain when we get on board what the batteries do, but the, the propulsion system is always electric. If you're submerged, you're on batteries. If you're on the surface, there are two engine rooms, you know, as we'll go through, and the engines, what they do is they're not mechanical to the drive shaft, they're just turning over a gigantic big generator generate electricity. Keep the battery. And keep, keep the battery charged and also we can redirect the energy into the motors themselves. You know, those engines when you were down, when you were under the surface. Uh, during World War II, you could not run the motors submerged. But after the war, on these boats and the two boats that I've served on, they put a snorkel. Like you would have a little kid snorkel, you know, go up, got a little thing on the top that closed it. Well, it wasn't a little ball, but it was electronic closure. Uh, and we could snorkel roughly 60 feet. We could be submerged, run this tube up, snorkel, exactly. run the engines underwater, uh, and we could, uh, you know, the, the head valve is like 36 inch diameter head valve. That's all it'd be sticking up out of the water. Okay, so any questions on the outside? No. All right. This is the original submarine, the Hunley. That's where it all began, right there. 
don't think I'd like to have served on that one. <laughs> no. You hand cranked it. The propellers were hand cranked. We'll talk a little bit about the outside. Now the uh, there's an inner there's an inner tube uh, inside. There's this watertight look, looks like a uh, long tube. The exterior though are are uh, where we held the fuel. So you have these these are and also the ballast tanks. So how does a submarine surface and submerge? Well, it's basically you got these big air tanks on both sides of the submarine, and when you want to submerge, you let the air out and, and uh, gravity will take you down. You close the valves and when you want to surface, there are high compression, high pressure, 3,000 pound tanks that you blow the air back out and you surface. That's very simple. So these are the outer skin. They opened it up a little bit so you can see the, kind of like what's inside. But those part of the ballast tanks and also the fuel. Fuel's interesting. You put fuel in there and fuel is, uh, lighter than water it always hang at the top of the tank and as we use fuel you know the, the uh, water pressure would keep coming up because there was holes in, there's holes in the bottom of those tanks so the water pressure would keep the fuel coming up and uh, so we used the tanks for uh, for fuel and when they emptied out we uh, had to get more fuel we could do about 11,000 miles on a full tank of, uh, of fuel <laughs> really yeah underway we didn't have these rails this is strictly for the the tourism and the boats that I was on this was a, a wooden deck as opposed to a steel deck so, well there's the wood right there okay um, they're gonna take us up to the floor torpedo room and we'll be coming out back here okay now during World War II one of the uh, things that these, these type of boats would do would surface actually would uh, use their deck guns. Uh, modern submarines do not have deck guns. There's no deck guns. World War II was the last, uh, last time that happened. And wasn't that preferable, Walter? What's that? Wasn't that a preferable thing well, to yeah, do? Well, yeah, save torpedoes. Yeah, save the torpedoes, shoot them with a gun, if you can. Middle. These are 40 millimeters. We had one forward, one aft, and we lined the bridge with 50 caliber, 450 caliber machine guns, and we used those as support wire when troops are coming back. So this was the tor how you loaded a torpedo. They changed it into an entrance way. This is normally how you'd go in and out of a submarine, a little hatch like that, and I'll, I'll point it out to you when we get below. Hey, I got a question, Walt. Well, like you guys, there's no rails on. No rails on. Sure, no. Yeah. They have a uh, when y'all surface, you didn't get up on top of the front. We serve uh, on a conventional submarine. You crawl. All hurricane and any any typhoons, we had to ride it out on the surface. And the reason is under the surface. No, no on the surface. surface. Nuclear powered submarines can go to 700 feet. You know they're they're self-contained. These boats, these diesel boats, the batteries could only last at most like like three days. When a submarine is uh, surfacing or submerging, think about the principle. At some point in time, right down through the middle is neutral buoyancy, and it's very close to the surface, and you could spin on that. So, so you know, if you're if you're at that neutral buoyancy and a wave hits the sail, boom, you're you're tipped over. Yeah. So to prevent that from happening, now you could do it in a super emergency, but the rule of thumb was, in your rough waters, you were on the surface. And if you were prone to seasickness, right you were seasick. You were, you were sick as a dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been there. I rode out, I rode out a uh, hurricane in uh, Key West, Florida, and two typhoons in the Far East. And every one of them, I was, I was barfing. <laughs> never could, never get to get past that. All right, now we're going to go down below. Okay. <laughs> Thank 
Yeah. But I don't think they'd have put it up. Probably on the back side. Yeah, maybe that's why I wouldn't see it. Well, this is how you came up and down. Now this is the, we are, we are inside the pressure hull now. This is the, the four torpedo room. Uh, there are six torpedo tubes forward, as you can see, and one, two, three, there's one under, way down there, hard to see. We could carry somewhere around 10 torpedoes. The Mark 14 was the World War II special. <laughs> The, the warhead was roughly one ton of uh, high explosives, and these things are steam steam driven. It's a little steam engine inside there, uh, cranking that propeller. They could go roughly 50 miles an hour quite fast. Now, this is also where people slept. They don't have the racks here, but uh, they you would sleep. There'd be a rack here. You could put the torpedo. It'd be racks up above every place that you you could possibly put a person. Well, there's a rack right there. Uh, okay. Now, again, to get qualified on a submarine, you would have to go to every compartment. So this compartment, during my qualification, I fire torpedoes, I know how to load them, I know all those valves, I know how to operate in this room. Now, it was a need for doing that. For instance, you don't know where you'd be at on a submarine when there was a collision or when, they, when there was damage control. So they would close those doors, heavy doors. So if you were in here by yourself, you would need to know what to do. So that's the whole principle behind becoming a qualified submariner. I don't have to go through this room with the lead petty officer in here and explain to him how to operate everything after, and it took a while. So every compartment was like that. You had to know every compartment and what to do in each compartment from a damage control point of view. View. Now this is the uh, escape hatch. It's also uh, uh, what we would use for locking in and locking out UDT. Uh, I, my term is UDT because uh, it was, that was before the SEALs team but in the later part. So what you would do, there's a ladder here. You could climb up in there. It would take basically three people to get up in there. they close this hatch here and then you would flood water up over, there's another door. See that door right there? Yeah. Uh -huh. They would flood water over the top of that door. So you have a little headroom, but, but, but only that much. So now you're sitting there, three people with tanks on or whatever, and you know, flood water over that, the lip of that door. Then, they, then we put air pressure in there to equalize where, whatever depth we're at. It would equalize the pressure outside the hull. Now you can open that door. So when you open up that door, you open up that door, and now you're free to uh, go out and do your nasties. You'd also be locking back in. If we wanted to be real covert about it, we would sit on the bottom. They would come back with uh, some type of finder of our equipment. They'd come back in the same way. The door would be open. They'd come in, close the door, drain the water, and they're back in board, and no one knew that they're out doing whatever they're going to do. Uh, let me explain over here, a head. What is a head? It's the John. Okay, here's a shower. Now there was no, on a boat like this, we didn't take showers underway. There was no showers. You know, if you're out for 50, 60 days, no showers. And the reason is, on a boat like this, fresh water was very limited, very limited. So to preserve it for cooking, and primarily the batteries, uh, you you didn't do it. Now, so this is a shower. This, this is the officer's shower, an officer's head. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to see it a little bit better back there, but there's a bunch of valves and things that you pull and open up and whatnot to put water in there. Now, the sanitary tank underneath is pressure proof by itself. You could, uh, it can withstand the depth of the boat. But, uh, so to use this, you basically open it up with no pressure in there, hopefully, no pressure in there. It would uh, open up and do your thing. 
However, somebody up here in this control one wrong day put a little air pressure in there. Mm -hmm. So when the captain come in <laughs> and took his dump or whatever he did, what you do is you open up the flapper valve, right? Well, there was pressure in there, so I had filled this whole thing up. And guess what we called him, his nickname? Flapper Jim. That was the captain. All right, now these are the doors. As you, no as you notice, they're, they're as, as thick as a hull. This room could be filled up, and, uh, and, and it would withstand these doors, will withstand the, uh, the test depth of the boat. So again, from a damage control point of view, you would close that during, during combat. All these doors would be closed anyway. To start with, but if you had a collision or something, you would close the door and and, and go from there. Okay. Any questions okay. on the uh, forward torpedo room? No. Okay. Walter, Walter, one question. Okay. Yeah. Each one of these compartments is that where you would keep your personal stuff? Yes. You, there's very That's limited like places locker? for personal stuff, and you'd have you'd have. It was kind of like whoever gets there first, because okay. there was no assigned stuff. It was like. Uh, whoever been on the board the longest, and 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 you had to be qualified. Anybody who didn't wear these dolphins, who are still qualifying, they were lower than whale traps. Okay. You know, I mean, you had to have dolphins to be recognized as a crew member. Okay. Okay. You, you were you were you were a squad. So when y'all were underway, did you have four torpedoes loaded in each one? And each and each and then these other ones. It it so you only had ten torpedoes on board. We had. We had six tubes here, six and we tubes. had we had extra torpedoes on each side. But the tubes were loaded when you were the tube, in one of the other. But you can carry them. So okay, so the boat in Key West that I was on, all tubes were loaded, and I was on the Cuban blockade. We meant business. All tubes are loaded. There's six tubes forward and four tubes aft, as you'll see. Okay. On the on the perch, the one that I served on in the Philippines and Vietnam, they took the torpedo tubes out. Four and a half torpedo tubes were removed, and we basically used that space for temporary bunking. And we would haul special people. We would haul this guy here, SEAL Team people. Yeah. And we would lock this. We would lock. We had many different ways of launching those people. This was the primary way of getting people on the shore when we wanted to be really covert about it. If we wanted to. Uh, uh, we, let's say we had marine recon aboard that weren't uh, uh, water qualified. We would surface maybe 10, 15 miles out at sea. We had rubber rafts that we'd blow up, put roughly 10 people in each rubber raft. They would put a string or a line between the rubber rafts. We would pull around, come around, submerge, run up one of our periscopes, and, and grab that line and pull them as close as we could to shore. And then, and, and then they would paddle the rest away. We would sit on the bottom. We would, we would continue to uh, go down. When you go on the bottom, the boat will turn a little bit, you know, one way or another. Yeah. So we would sit there, uh, and uh, when they were coming back, usually they were under fire coming back, the bad guys would say, oh, we got them, we're driving them towards the water. Well, remember I said we had deck guns right. on that boat there. We would surface, broadside, and we'd pound away to give them support fire coming back. So that was the reason that they brought that World War II boat back into commission for those special operations in Vietnam, just because of the deck guns. Okay? Cool. Uh, Any other questions up here? Can we want to let all these okay. people go ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can join the party. Yeah. they can join in. Yeah. All right, now, okay, now how do you get through these hatches? Now watch what I do. Hey, is there a height restriction on a submarine if you were to be a submariner? I'm 6'1". And there were taller people than me. Well, okay. no, I guess not. <laughs> now, how I, how you go, I usually grab here, I put one leg in, and you duck, and you go in like this, okay? Now, be careful because a lot of people, including myself, have banged my head and my knee or something like that <laughs> doing this. So I go, I do this, crouch, slide through, and boom, you're through, okay? All right. Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to drive it with your left hand. Okay. Do what he did. Well, I didn't through. see it. There you go. Each foot over. Oh, look, my bunk. <laughs> well, I'll get way up here so I can, everybody's in and they can kind of hear me. You want me to get behind you? This one's off the supposed Yeah. These were nicer quarters than what was up in the front, oh, Walter? Yeah, they, okay. Everybody in? Can you hear me back there? No, not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Okay. 
Man, this is a lot nicer. Okay, you getting claustrophobic yet? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> All right, now, are we all back there? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is what they call the forward battery compartment, and where that name comes from is underneath where you're standing on, there are 126 cells. Each cell of a battery is six feet high and holds 33 gallons of electrolyte and um, they're interconnected to generate 250 volts. So this is, the, and now where we're standing is the officer's quarters. This whole area is the officer's quarter. Scooter is standing in the captain's room. Uh, it's a single bed and that's what he gets privileged that. Everything else is multi-bunked. Uh, and so your, your chief petty officers and the officers, roughly seven officers and uh, five or six chiefs on board, E7 or above. So this is what they call the officer's room. And now, this was the, a curtain or something, Walter? There was typically a That's curtain. That's all I had, no That's doors. All, no doors. No okay. Doors. No doors. Uh, this is the chief's quarters here. They call it the goat locker. I don't know where the goat comes from, but uh, that's what. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Now this little room here, this little room right here that you go by was the yeoman's or the secretary's office right here, and he took care of all the paperwork uh, that went on because they're right next door to the officers, and he would take care of all the paperwork, all the personnel type of uh, paperwork right here. All right, so here now is a right-handed entrance, so you got to. Got to be able to shift hands here to go through this one. <laughs> Look, don't use your thumb. Yeah. Hang your fingers on. Well, I've seen this in movies. You've seen this in movies. <laughs> yeah. Now you've seen the real deal. Yeah, and I'm glad to be seeing it. Been doing Absolutely. it in the army, that's for sure. Question about height restriction. Walter was going to say, oh yeah, you could be over 6'2". And I said, oh God, that's why I didn't join the Marine. I mean, I was a man. And I see Becky didn't come through. She gets claustrophobic. Well, Walter, what, one thing's for sure, in all of these World War II movies and summary movies, uh -huh. They all, uh, they're all made in Hollywood because there's no room for a film crew. Anymore. No. Now let's have a certain kind of camera. We, we all here now? Yeah. Okay, this is called a control room. Underneath this is, a, uh, on these type of boats was a sonar and, and some auxiliary type of, uh, of engines uh, and, and motors and whatnot. But this is where navigation took place. This is a, a, uh, a helm that up, up, up here is the conning tower. You know, you see move people with the right. periscopes on these type of boats. Up here is the conning tower. They got it closed off. We can't go up in there. But that's the uh, that's con up in there. That's typically where the helm was. But in an emergency, we come down here and use this helm. Now, how you who controlled the diving and and surfacing was a with a chief petty officer. He would stand here at his watch, and this is the board. He would pull these valves. Remember, I said to submerge, you open up the valves let the air out the boat sinks well the chief of the boat uh, or chief of the watch would be here in those levers right there basically open up the valves that that let the air out and also closed it so when you say we have a green board you know all the valves are closed or whatnot okay see uh, here are the uh, bow and stern planes on this type of boat at the uh, stern and at the bow you uh, at, you'll see these out you know when you stick your hand out of a car and you go like this well, that's basically what you're doing. You're flying underwater here. This is the uh, forward wings, and that's the after wings. And between these two guys, the uh, the officer on watch, uh, if we were submerged, would tell them, okay, uh, you know, X number of feet, and then give me a nine degree down bubble, that type of thing. And these guys would do that. I had to. Everybody who qualifies have to go through that. You know, you have to be able. Again, you have to know everything about the ship. Now, my final qualification in this. Look around this room, all the complications. And that was the electrical board behind where they're standing. My final qualification with the officer, qualification officer, he brought me into the control room and blindfolded me. Ooh. And then he would tell me to go do something. So I would have to go, he'd say, uh, 
go up. This is what's called a trim manifold. It allowed water to be transferred back and forth. So I could go over there and I did that. He'd go behind and he'd say, go with that switchboard back there. He'd tell me, okay, light off certain lights. So I had to go through this room blindfolded and do what he told me to do. Again, it was from a, from a, uh, uh, the need to be able to survive no matter what compartment you're in. And, and that's why we, uh, it took roughly six months to get what's called qualified, to be able to wear your dolphin. Uh, this is where the main action was. The officers typically here, the officers quarters there, they'd come in here. Navigation would happen, that's a compass down there. Let's see what else. We can't get up in here, that's kind of cool. You've, uh, you, you've seen some of the World War II movies where they're looking at the scopes, that's up there mm -hmm. on, on these type of boats. But these are fun. Now uh, on, the, uh, on the two boats that, have, that I served on that had a snorkel, if you're going long, now remember I had this electronic head valve that would close if you, uh, if, if, you, if, if you submerged a little bit. Well, the engines don't stop running. They just keep on running. And you can tell because the air in here now, it's like going up in, in, a, in a plane. Uh, the altitude starts climbing, you, you, you know, you're you're, it's, it, the, the pressure is coming less. So if you're in your rack and we're snorkeling, and they close the head valve, you know, you're, you wake up and then you come up here and give these guys hell. You know, you, you, you yell at these guys, hey, you snorkeled, you, 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 you uh, basically uh, caused me to get up. So, so these guys, when we're snorkeling, had to very much wide, uh, mind their P's and Q's and they'd catch hell from the rest of the crew. Okay, uh, let's see here, what did I miss here? Oh, no, you've heard the, uh, you probably saw or maybe heard some of the movies that when we dive or surface, they, uh, they have a, a, a klaxon, we call it a klaxon. Ooga, ooga. You might have heard those in the movies. Well, you did uh, uh, two, two, dive, dive, ooga, ooga, and we surface is three. Uh, now, over here are the valves that basically control the air, high, high pressure air manifolds, and this is where we put air into the tanks when we wanted to surface. And at three, it, the high pressure air was 3,000 pounds. We'd get up, uh, and then to save some of that high pressure air, when we got up to a certain thing, we'd just light off what's called a low pressure pump. You just had to add cylinders on the boat. Oh, yeah. There's no, there's no air to compress. No, we, we had our own air compressor. You had, but you had, you had to have that air stored in cylinders. We had the, the cylinders are stored. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we had our own 3,000 yeah. pound compressor. That's some of the stuff underneath yeah. here to charge those tanks back up yeah. once we used them up. The compressors once you, were uh, once electric you got on pumps? Electric, electric. Oh, electric. Okay. They were electric. Everything is electric. Yeah. Okay. Everything like the, the engines, like I that, said, the engines that. only purpose of those engines, as you'll see, turn over big generators. Everything else is electric. Okay. All right? And Walter, right. your rate was? Huh? Your rate was I was an electrician. I was an electrician. Okay, here's, uh, these are the, some of the uh, uh, switches basically light off the this is the clacks and there's damage there's a emergency surface there's collision these are the three things that would make the the, the noise okay here's the, this is the radio room when you go by here this is the radio room and now you got another hatch to go through I'm shocked look at the old Wow I don't want to be closed up, and that's like being in a phone booth all day. There's not much room here. Yeah, look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's oh, the cook. We're here. I want mine over easy. <laughs> you can order it. You can order anything you want. But for all intents and purposes, Walter, the submarine was a single deck, right? I mean, you didn't have people that actually lived down no, there, like no, 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 and all. No, everybody lived from halfway up. Okay. Yeah, okay. Underneath, underneath was uh, mechanical, mechanical stuff. Yeah. Okay. I bet you he got to sleep in there, huh? Yeah. Is that where he slept? The cook? No, he didn't sleep there. Oh, look at the loaves of bread. Did they really yeah. make bread like that? Yeah. 
Okay, this is this compartment from that from that uh, door there, that hatch to the hatch down here. This was the after battery. Now, this part of it is the galley. As you can see, the galley's there. The cook. There was typically four cooks on board, uh, and you could. Uh, we we had the best food. Uh, one of the things about submarines, they gave us uh, almost twice the amount of money for rations for submariners than they did for surface craft, just to kind of keep us happy. But this is where the tables, we would, multi-purpose, we would eat in here. This is also where we come to socialize. We'd run movies in here, little movies, and I was kind of a projector man. Uh, we, uh, what, so when we generate garbage, what do you do with the garbage on board ship? Well, it's like, it's like the sanitary tanks, you have to get rid of it. Blow here up. we have a little, look like a miniature torpedo tube. I was looking for it here. Uh, yeah, here it is here. This is the garbage chute. Uh, so basically, you uh, put your garbage in a little uh, plastic bag, more or less, and put weights in it, metal of some kind, scrap metal, and uh, you would, you would, uh, shoot it out like you shoot out a torpedo and the reason for the weights is if if the, the material floated it would go to the surface and people know you're down there so right. when we when we moved our garbage we always have it weighted uh to, to to sink now below us is the is the is the reefer where we kept uh, our perish our uh, perishable very cold down there now we had open galley what that means is on a submarine at least the ones i served on Let's say you want to do your own cooking at 3 o'clock in the morning. You come back off the beach, you're having fun. With, the beach is when you go on Liberty or when you go out and have fun. All right, you come back off, off of, uh, and you say, I want to eat a steak right now. Well, you go down here, you get out of steak, you go cook it. That's what's called an open galley. In fact, on the boat that I was down in Key West, we'd go down there, bring out steaks, go to the piers and do shark fishing with steaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was, again, this was, uh, this was the main room where you would socialize. Now on the perch, the one that had, we carried all those uh, extra people, they had to stay in their bunk because, you know, we, we had a crew of roughly 80. We were able to walk around because we had things to do. But if we carried another 50 to 100 extra people, if they were walking around freely, it would, it would and were submerged, you know, it would upset the balance of the ship. So they were required to stay in their bunks for however long it took us to deploy them. Usually it wasn't long two or three or four days from the Philippines, we'd pick up a load in the Philippines, go over to Vietnam, have them do their whatever they're gonna do, lock them out. Now, if we picked them up, uh, we, would, we would do that, but typically on some of these, we'd, uh, like, like uh, Marine Recon, we would launch them, they'd, they'd go out and stay along. But anyway, what we would do when we had all these people on, we would eat in shifts, they had to eat in shifts. So this galley, this galley here, and there was another table right here, uh, would hold, Oh, you squeeze in there quite tight. But they would be just, uh, we'd go to the people and say, okay, your turn to eat, your turn to eat, your turn to eat. And otherwise, they'd have to be in their bunk. It's kind of kind of a long trip. Some people get, were, were claustrophobic. We had one U, uh, Filipino UDT guy, and uh, we got on board, and he was a little nervous to start with. But when we, uh, when the boat filled up with smoke, and I'll explain that why that happened here in a little bit, the guy goes bonkers, and and his buddies had to jump all over him, hold on, because he's screaming, "Let me out of here! Let me out of here!" All that kind of crap. <laughs> anyway, okay, so not everybody's cut out for this, as you probably can tell. That uh, to become a, a submariner it is all voluntary. If I didn't want to go to sea any, in, at any time, I could have said, got on the dock and said, "I'm not going to sea." You're out of submarines at that point, but it's totally voluntary. You you don't have to do this. It's voluntary. Okay, so. Now this is not a watertight door, it's just a separator. Back in here uh, was the after battery sleeping compartment. You'll get an idea about the bunks. How long was the normal tour, you know, on the submarine out at sea yeah. when you would come Walter, in? they're asking about this. Is this an escape here? Is oh, yeah, let me, let me back up, let me back up. Let me back up, on. excuse me. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me this is the main entrance. We had a part, we had uh, four and a half, you can do the same thing. But most people use the after battery, or the after battery part with the catch. Now you put around here, uh, 
it's not here anymore. But you see all these little holes. There was another plate that come up here and you bolt it down and it gave us a little added protection from depth charges. So if it blew the hatch off up there, if a depth charge blew a hatch off up there, you'd have this inner plate to prevent the water from coming in. It was uh, one of those safety type of things. So this was mainly how you get up and down. Once you bolted it on, though, that was it. it was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that only when you went to sea, when you didn't need to use this hatch. It was there yeah. to uh, just for that extra extra safety point of view. But this was it. You get in here, and you know you start climbing up. And then when you come down, basically you're not really using your feet. You're just using your hands and falling down because it's kind of tight in there. Okay. Oh, did that answer that question? Any other questions? Yeah. This is the after battery and gallery at the same time. All right. Let's do it. You didn't have to say it to be right. Yeah, we didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. You got everybody there? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, uh, this is the after battery uh, sleeping compartment. It was usually for the uh, uh, lower rank enlisted people. It, uh, it was very hot. You know, I started out here. This was my rack right here, matter of fact, right here. That's where I started off on that rack. Down in Key West, Florida, on that boat, how I would be able to, it was like 95 degrees in this compartment, sleeping type. What I learned to do and how I learned to sleep here is, uh, you know, there's no, you can't, uh, you can't be uh, modest when you're on a submarine because there's 70 people. This is, you know, you're, you're, you're among, so we, I would sleep in my skivvies right on top of this and I'd put a wet towel on me. And uh, using that wet towel and the evaporation of that wet towel, it felt pretty good. I could sleep pretty good there. Okay, now the next part here, before we go to the next uh, airtight, this is the main head for the crew. There's uh, there two or three showers here and you'll see a head over here and I'm gonna explain when we get into the after torpedo, I'll explain the head a little bit more. But now, underway, remember, we didn't take any showers underway. So, I was submerged once for 55 days up in North Vietnam. No showers. And you notice that odor. There's an odor down here. No, it has, it has disappeared a little bit, quite a bit. But there was a, a familiar smell that diesel boat sailors, like myself, got accustomed to. And we, we I could go aboard any boat and it all smelled the same to us, and it's like coming home, that smell. But it didn't permeate all of your clothes and whatnot. And you go out, you go out in Liberty, and you think you're smelling good. And I went into a, I went into a bathhouse in Japan once, <laughs> and because uh, I, you know, I like steam baths, and we get drunk, we go in a steam house, sober up. Anyway, I go in there. I had taken a shower. When we pull into port, you're able to use the showers. I put on aftershave, and I'm thinking I'm smelling pretty good. So we go out, my friend and I, we get drunk up, and we're gonna go in uh, to a steam house in Japan, which we did. So we go in, and there's, there's Mama-san. And she looks at us, and she says, are you boys submarine sailors? And I'm thinking she's looking at my dolphins, right? I said, yeah, how'd she know? And she goes like this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we've been called sewer pipe sailors, uh, uh, stink boat sailors. I mean, there's any number of terms for uh, how we smell, but uh, that was all part of it. And uh, again, when I have this odor, this is bringing back this is bringing back memories for me. So when we go through this little thing here, you can see the shower. Now what we did with it, what did we do with the showers? You always have, you always use extra space for something. When we were pulled to sea, we were allowed two movies. That's the time when you had the movie reels. When we pulled to sea, we were allowed two movies a day. We, I'd, I'd been an electrician, my job was the movie guy. And I'd go to the library on that base, and I was allowed two movies per day. So I, people would come to me and say, "Hey, Deep, my name was Deeps. They call me Deeps. Hey, Deeps, uh, get a John Wayne movie or get this kind of movie, right?" So I was kind of popular at that time. So we had all these movies. Well, we used those showers for putting the movies in because we couldn't <laughs> use the shower. We used the show showers for a just, movie lock. Just store your yeah. <clears throat> All right, be careful here. Look, there's another hatch. All right, this one here, you gotta be careful. There's a hatch. Be careful right here when you come through. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Well, you gotta get the hand. 
Be careful right here, sir. Okay. Yeah, let me get past you while. Yeah. Fun. And just tell everybody, watch their head. Okay. <laughs> that ain't right here. Okay. Heads up on your left there, Bill. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm easing in. There we go. And, pa and pass that along. You got to tell the next guy, watch your head, Bill. You got to tell the next person, pass it on down the line. Pass it down, down the line. Hey, is this the way you spit your tobacco juice? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess there was no dipping. No dipping, no smoking. None of that. There was smoking, a lot of smoking. A lot of smoking. I didn't see man I didn't see anybody dip. Yeah. I mean it might have, I don't know. It wasn't well, what the hell do you do with the tobacco juice when you dip? I don't know if anybody who dipped, but, but it swallow it. Well, you put it. You, you, you put it. You put it in the John. You know, you put it in the head. You can flush it off. Is everybody here? Okay, yeah, I see three back yes. All right, this there's there's two engine rooms on on these type of ships. This is the forward engine room, and on the, each side here are 1,600 horsepower diesel Fairbanks Morris. They're either Fairbanks or General Motors. Uh, that's who produced these. And on the end down here, which you can't quite see is the generator. So all these guys did, their whole purpose, there was nothing mechanical to the shaft, they were just turning over these giant generators. So you'd have these things banging away at you and there'd be people, engine men would stand here and uh, running these things when you're, when you're on the surface. Uh, many of them didn't wear hearing aids, they didn't have the mufflers, I guess it was a macho thing. But you stand here with these two things banging away and it is noisy in here, it is noisy. Uh, now on the end right here, you'll notice here's how we made fresh water. These are we had two distillers, one on each side, um, and we could produce something like 500 gallons a day. Now you'd think that's a lot of water, but the batteries, the biggest consumer of water on these diesel electric boats were the batteries. Remember when you had a the batteries that you had to have water add the water to them, you don't yes. do that anymore, but when you had to have water to them? Well these batteries, each each one of those compartments had those six foot high, thirty-three gallon cells, 126 in each one, and that water will go down. And you had a crawl space about that. And being an electrician, I had to go in there and water them with a garden hose. In and that was the biggest consumer of water. Is the the keeps, that was that was pretty well, how much. How often did you have to recharge them? Because well, you, oh, you re they were hot. I mean, those batteries were getting hot from all the. They were getting hot, very hot, very hot. Uh, it depends on how long we had discharged for, or how long we we ran and submerged. Uh -huh. On the surface, the batteries are basically just floated; they're not being used because the generators are generating electricity at that point. So this is how we generated our fresh water. We could do it. When I was on a Vietnam patrol, though. One of our water uh, distillers went out. We were down to one distiller then, and that really made it interesting. Uh, so again, for qualifications, I went through this room, and I know every valve on here. And I had to do everything in an engine, and I could start these engines up. You know, I wasn't proficient at it, but I knew enough to help help the engine man himself. If, if me and just one other engine man were in here, I could do that. Okay. Getting pretty good into that door back there. We call them hatches. All right, so this is uh, this is the after engine room. Again, two Fairbanks Morris. Uh, here we had here we had another uh, entrance or escape. Uh, what you would do on this one is again you you would have yeah okay when you come by here you can feel. You can feel a double lip right there. See these bolts here? That's kind of what I was explaining up there. Here they actually have the, the thing there. This thing here, you drop this, invert it, 
put it back up there, and now that, that would extend it down about here. Okay, so to escape in this room, you would have to flood the whole compartment to the point where the water was higher than that, that lip. Then you'd put enough air pressure in this room to equalize the pressure outside, whatever depth you were. Now you could go up underneath, go up, and hopefully make it to the surface. Uh, nothing, not a whole lot different about this. Now, and when we were in the forward engine room, remember what I said on that, on the perch that I served on, which is the one in, in Vietnam, they took all, all those engines out. So everything in that other compartment back there had no engines, and all that was temporary berthing space for the special people that we operated with. Okay? Okay, now this room here that we're going into <clears throat> is, uh, is really getting tight. Now this is where I stood watch, it's called maneuvering. So we'll, we'll try to get everybody in there. And Gary, let me know when you've made it through. But you like this, huh? Yeah. You can stand over here, Bill. There's room over here. I'm, a com I'm coming on. I'm coming on. A lot of room here. Oh, yeah, a lot of room. Watch your head. After a while, you, you kind of yeah. bobbed and waved here. Um, you, you, slide in over here. You slide in over here. Over. So we can all kind of at least here. see what I'm talking about here. Suck it in. <laughs> And I get, I'm looking for looking for Gary. Gary's taking Gary, a picture. Gary, right here. Okay, can you come around? Can you come around? Because I'm. Yeah, uh, yeah, he can get right here. Okay, we're. We all here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh hell, the gang's all here. Wife, wife didn't join us. Oh, shit. No. No. Okay, I'm, I missed her. Okay, this is where <laughs> I stood watch. This is what's called maneuvering. I was an electrician. Now again, the submarine underneath us. Down through here are the are the shafts going out. There's two shafts, two propeller shafts basically, and the and the uh, there's uh, two motors, and they actually wound the the armature. They actually wound the the uh, wires around the shaft itself and built the motor around it. So there are four motors, two on each shaft, and and there would be a bench right here, and there'd be two people back here. I was a senior controllerman, so I'd be on this side, and I'd have my junior controllerman on that side. Now these are what's called the sticks. You'll you, you'd push these down as a release, and you'd, you'd do things with them. So with these sticks, this side here control this shaft. This side here control that shaft. And two in the middle were uh, uh, were set so we can redirect the electricity. I control the engineman would start the engines. They then would turn control over of the engines over to me. Now we had individual control. Of, of each engine or we could gang them together and and do so this was the speed of the engines okay. <clears throat> and this has to do with uh, how much energy I'm, I'm looking at to generate from the generators and then also where that and you can see we're, we're, we're cranking out 3,000 amps times 250 volts that, oh, that wow. that's that's a lot of watts this room this this cage right here contains if you if it's still in there the uh, the bus bars that carried electricity were about three inches wide, solid copper, and an inch thick. And this even that wasn't enough to keep the heat down. This room got extremely hot. We would have rags on here, so because of how hot they were, and we had air conditioning ducts. There, I don't see them on this boat. There might be one there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there they are. Okay, yeah, there they are. So we had these air conditioning ducts dumping right down on us, and the, and the, and the on, on these boats there was no dress code, there was no requirements. What we would do in the tropics, especially, I'd have uh, uh, flippers on, sand flippers on, and just a pair of shorts. And the only time I was required to have uh, any kind of a shirt on, if you will, is when I was in the mess hall. You had to have a shirt on of some kind, 
uh, to go in a mess hall. So, no uh, shirt, so, no service. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you walk in there pretty skunky. Okay, what's this shirt doing for me? Uh, so this is where I stood, and this is where, this is where I had my epiphany, uh, and it goes like this. I was looking at these meters. We were submerged off of, off of Haiphong Harbor, for 55 days. We snorkeled every night. And uh, I absolutely loved the Navy. I still love the Navy. Uh, it turned my life around. I went as a juvenile delinquent, and it and it made me a, a man. And but, but but when we were up off there, 55 days submerged, I, I said to myself, I said, Debus, you absolutely love the Navy. You know, it, it took a juvenile delinquent and made a man. But there's got to be something more than looking at these meters the rest of your life, right? <laughs> so that was the epiphany I had. And when we surfaced back in the Tonkin Gulf, and we pulled into uh, in the Subic Bay, I went up to the base library and took out a book on colleges. <laughs> so these meters helped my career. <laughs> and that was that was another phase of my life. But this is where this is where uh, this is where I really enjoyed submarine service. Again, it was voluntary. I do it again in a heartbeat. The odors bring back memories for me. Okay. Uh, so any questions on maneuvering? No. All right. Let's maneuver into the after torpedo room right behind you. All right. Maneuver away, Jerry. John Cole. How about John? You know John Cole? No. Louis Cole? Yeah. It's only Mad Dog? I don't know, Mad Dog, but probably not the same guy you're thinking of. Why? What do you have? Why? I don't know. He's just maybe. Uh, I don't know. It's not nice. Probably did. You didn't serve with him, right? He was a submarine. Oh, he was a submarine. There are a lot of dear friends of mine for years. I mean, forever. Go ahead. You're the cameraman. Oh, well, the cameraman. Yeah. Right, yeah. Sir. Yeah. Gunboats. All right, there go. And four tubes on the bottom. Someone hit. Someone hit. Someone hit? Uh oh. -uh. No, I didn't hit. I was just uh, stumbling out. Stumbling out. Stumbling out. <laughs> just holl at this blood hitting the floor, you know. <laughs> This is one of the more newer torpedoes. You notice it's much smaller. Uh, some of the, so here's here's another example of the bunk. Remember I said you could sleep yeah. next to a torpedo. This was one K. This was a, a prime sleeping compartment. Uh, and I after I got certain uh, motored up, Status. I finally made it back here. Made it back <laughs> to the after torpedo room. Uh, so I have a picture when I qualified, and I'm gonna I'm going to uh, cut this out, uh, because. Uh, I'm going to put the old one in there as well. So here I am. Good. <laughs> uh, again, uh, we, uh, I, I, fired, I didn't really fire an actual torpedo. What, what they did for qualifications, you had to go through all of the steps, and what we, what we would shoot would be water slugs. Now, how a torpedo has excelled is with expelled, it's with uh, 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 air. It's like blowing it out, right? So you you fill the tubes up with water. It's and like spitballs in a straw. It basically that's it. <laughs> so so what I shot was what we call water slug. But spit. if there had been a torpedo in there, it'd, it'd been the same thing. So that's part of qualification. Uh, this was a flare gun. We could shoot flares out if we needed to. Oh, uh, let's see here. Well, okay, okay, here's the like here's gyroscopes on on the torpedoes and stuff. I mean, like you got these app torpedoes, right? All right. So now you fire that torpedo, yeah. but you're traveling in the opposite direction. If you right. if you if you think it's shooting like a gun, not necessarily. Well, no, uh, that's what I'm asking. Is that like a gyroscope or something that yeah. you know that, yeah. that got yeah. that torpedo yeah. to go? Yeah. So you had to program that into the torpedoes. Yes. Yeah. Who did that now? Torpedo man. Okay. Torpedo man. Right. Uh, that was their job. Right. And up in the con conning tower, which you weren't able to see, uh, they're connected up there to the torpedoes, and they're the, the, the first versions of a computer were mechanical. They weren't electrical, they were mechanical computers. So you turn little knobs and whatnot and program it, if you will, mechanically, and that was fed electronically back into the, com into the torpedoes, and the torpedoes then uh, would, uh, uh, would know where to wow, go. That now, later cool. torpedoes, yeah. They're extremely sophisticated, but the next version that I dealt with was a wire-guided one, a little wire coming out the back of them, 
for miles and miles it'd be streaming out, but you'd 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 steer that torpedo like with a with a, a joystick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a joystick. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. now now there are probably even many more years sophisticated yeah. than what I remember. Um, so Walter, you could fire from the con. Yeah, you can fire and from you the can con. fire from the torpedo room. You so where was the, the to, mechanism, yeah, the trigger yeah, mechanism? Yeah, uh, but that, the, the primarily was fired from yeah, the conning yeah. towers. You can see in the submarine movies, you know, a guy pushing a button. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he's doing that, and it's coming back either forward or aft. Mm -hmm. The primary tubes, of course, with the forward tubes, we didn't use the after tubes that much. It was mostly forward tubes, but uh, we had four tubes, and you can see we had uh, another four, four to six torpedoes back here. Again, they would be loaded down through here like in. Now my bunk back here was, uh, well, it'd be equivalent to this guy right here. It would be on this side here, and mine was on that side, but it'd be... It'd be so what made it much better to be back here, Walter? Temperature? Uh, temperature, a little more quiet. It, it didn't get the rocking and rolling that you did uh, on the bow. You know, the bow was doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got you. So yeah. back here, well, back here you do a figure eight. <laughs> Put you to sleep. In a typhoon, I woke up. <laughs> Once coming back off of a drunk, right? I'm going, <laughs> we're in a typhoon. <laughs> and that boat's going like this. And all, I opened my eyes up like this, and all I could see was purple. I must have been drinking wine or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't good. Okay, so uh, I, I was going to show you the head. They got it locked, uh, but that... Uh, no problem. Well, there's something else they may find interesting about the string. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to... Yeah, uh, when you... Uh, uh, there was a movie, and you might have seen it, with Chelsea Graham. It was called uh, Up Paris. Up Paris. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, remember the, old, remember the, uh, to the uh, uh, chief engineman in the room? He strung a line between the two sides. Oh, yeah. And why they come together. Now, yeah. that actually happens because a submarine is a circular device. And when you're under compressure, that, that, that actually compresses it. So that movie was very realistic. He had that line solid when he sur went on the surface, and it did this. Yeah. <laughs> when it went down to test depth, that yeah. actually happens. Now, okay. when you're going down the test depth, and you don't do it too often, but you have to do it every now and then, just to make sure, and, you, and it's creaking. Okay, now I'm down here. <laughs> I really want to do it. And you're like, you get it. And then, uh, it, it's, it's fun. But uh, you didn't do that very often. Well, yeah, I bet it wasn't fun then. <laughs> now, on these boats, we didn't generate any air. Nuclear boats are totally different. A nuclear boat can generate all the water you want. You can take any number of showers if you want. Remember, we didn't have any showers. They can. Uh, they never have to surface. Uh, they generate their own air. How they generate air on a nuclear boat is very interesting. They run high voltage through the water, and it separates out the oxygen from the hydrogen. Remember, water is H2O, two parts of oxygen. Okay, so it's called reverse osmosis. They pull the oxygen actually out of the seawater and dump the... Uh, dump the, uh, the excess off. That's how they generate. Now, we didn't have that capability. We were down, for covert reasons, we were down and we had to stay submerged for a little over three days. Now, you're, there's no air being regenerated here. So you're starting to use up all the oxygen in the boat and you're, you're going, you're, you know, your lungs are working. It's not like someone's stopping you from your body function. But you're saying, there's something wrong here, you know, there's something wrong, there's something wrong. Now, to take out the, the uh, carbon monoxide, we spread on, one, on, the, on the bunk, there was a, a chemical called CO2 absorber. It would absorb the, so we wouldn't at least die from carbon monoxide. We might die from lack of oxygen, but <laughs> we're not going to die from carbon monoxide. So, but that only, I only had to do that once. That was quite an experience. Here's another, here's the after torpedo hatch. You, we, we use this, people in this area to get out. We typically would climb up the ladders here. Again, notice this double lip. Yes. We would bring this down from an emergency situation, flip it around, bolt it back up again, and we could, we could escape from this room. Now again, the, the, the one in the forward torpedo tube, forward engine torpedo room, was the uh, was an escape hatch that we used with people like Scooter for locking them in and out when we were submerged doing covert operations. You can't do that here. You don't want to flood the whole compartment just to get Scooter out. Mm -hmm. No. Well, well, worth it. <laughs> okay? And you said you were gone 55 days. Submerged. Right, submerged. 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 Right. Uh, and we snorkeled time. every night. We okay. snorkeled every night. That boat had a snorkel on it. We were off of uh, Haiphong Harbor when they were bombing Haiphong. 
And what we were doing up there, we were doing two things. We were, we were, we were looking at the uh, Russian freighters coming in and out of Haiphong Harbor. And at the same time, they told the pilots, if you get hit, try to make it to water because there's some good guys out there. There's either a, sub, either a submarine or a Jolly G and Rat, you know, the flying boats to pick them up. So we were, we were doing that as well. We never picked up any pilots. What we would do uh, is, uh, so what do you do on recreation in a submarine like this? You know, when you're down here 55 days, well, once, you, once you're qualified, you don't have to do any work, basically. You stand your watch with three sections. You're gone for four hours and you're off for eight. Every four hours, there's meal. The cooks are cooking every four hours. So here would be my routine. I'd take it back here. I'd get up. I'd get up, go get something to eat, go in the maneuvering room where I stood my watch, did four hours in there, and I'd be off for eight hours. What I'd do is I'd come back and get my bunk. And it was really weird because I would go in my bunk. Now, and, and, and I did this for two weeks. And it was really weird. I would, I would, it would be like turning on a TV set. I'd say, what do I want to dream about now? And it would be like me turning on a television and I would dream about what I wanted to dream about. That's cool. That's cool. So, so after about two weeks, when I knew something was wrong, is when I'm in maneuvering and I'm on watch, I fell asleep on watch. Oh. And I said to myself, you only been sleeping for two weeks. You can't be tired. So I started forcing myself to stay awake, play chess, play cards, a lot of card playing. You can do some, uh, not a whole lot of athletic. You can do sit-ups and push-ups. Basically, that's all we can do here. Right. Uh, we snorkeled every radios? night. No music, huh? Uh, there, was no, there was no music. There was no radio. You couldn't get a radio right. signal. Uh, if you had, uh, we did have uh, records of some right. kind, but that was about it. But they kept it quiet. They kept the room dark in here because people were sleeping. Okay, they kept it dark. Uh, and every... Well, let's say every week they would light off all the lights and they say all hands turn to uh, field day. Field day is a term for, a naval term for clean up. So every couple of weeks they'd turn on all the lights and everybody had to get up and clean up, even though it wasn't dirty. Got to clean up. Give you something to do, basically. Give you something to do. Give you something to do. So that was, uh, that was the longest. I did. We snorkeled every night. Uh, that, was, that was quite an experience. Quite an experience. Okay, any other questions? That's the tour, gang. All right. Yeah. Very good. good job, Walter. Well. Good job, Walter. Excellent tour. Excellent. That's my roomie. Huh? <laughs> That's the only. My only, sir. Not your roomie. Please. <laughs>